talking about finances, but the core of what we do is beyond money. It will always be beyond money. Yes, good evening everyone. Welcome to Growth Conversations. This is Chris Duanes. This is your host and I welcome you to this special episode, Cashflow 101 Amidst COVID. So tonight is going to be fun and special because we have here with us a wonderful guest, a generous guest, and I'd like to introduce to you to her. She, uh, I'd like to introduce her to you. <laughs> so she is a global investment specialist, economics writer, MDRT member, and a civic worker. She's so generous. She mentors students from low-income backgrounds on how to earn their first million before they turn 25. But regardless of your age, I believe that our conversation tonight will be very relevant to you. She is also active in Rotary and in Toastmasters. And so welcome po natin ang ating guest, the one and only Miss Katrina Victoria Gumaya. Welcome po sa Growth Conversations. Good evening, Sir Cristo Anis, and to everyone po who are in Zoom. Good evening, everyone. Miss Katrina, uh, to, to some of our viewers, they know you uh, from your own circles, they know you from the Growth Summit as well, and you shared some of uh, some parts of your stories there, but uh, still some of our viewers don't know you yet, so... Para mas ma-appreciate nila where you're coming from and uh, as we approach this topic, can you share with us briefly your story? Because eh, maybe they've heard you that uh, you dropped out or you were not able to finish college, but now you have gone to to places, no? literally, figuratively. Paano po nangyari yon, Miss Katrina? I'm, so good evening again, everyone. Uh, I am Katrina Victoria Gumaya po, and for those who have seen my Growth Summit, you pretty much know a bit of my story already. So um, I have been a stock market investor for more than a decade, 16 years, 16, 17 years. And the reason why uh, I, I started in the stock market was because I was forced to, to become an investor at a young age. I did not finish college at 18 simply because we cannot afford anymore to go to college. So for those who are my age or older, you are perhaps familiar with the collapse of a pre-need company before. There was a college pre-need company who was supposed to pay for my college education, but because they declared bankruptcy when I was in college, I had no choice but to stop as well. So what I did from... from uh, mid-college, uh, second year college, I had to first find employment. And my background is that the reason why I was exposed to investment is because my dad trained me to read books at an early age by force as well. So wow. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this during the growth summit, but when I was in high school, um, um, my mom would only give me money for, for allowance, enough for food and fair home so for me to be able to afford cell phone load because before there wasn't only or unlimited text or calls you had to buy the whole card the 300 peso card so mm. for me to be able to afford that i had to ask money from my dad and my dad at the time was he he was not in badio so he was working um away from from the city so he was working somewhere else and his way of motivating me was he would send me books to read. And once I finish a chapter or a certain number of pages, he would ask me to explain how I understood that book. Like, for example, um, ask me, are you in already? And when I would say, for example, I'm on chapter four, he would ask me, what have you understood? If I explain chapters one to four the correct way, I would get an allowance. If I don't, I wow. don't get extra allowance. So that's how <laughs> I was trained. Yeah. So that was my high school training. So, and it was very expensive before to call because it was long distance call before. There was really a lot of um, cheap communication that time. So, yeah. And because of those books, those were my foundations. At a young age, I was exposed to 
because of my dad. And at the age of 18 as well, um, circumstances in life forced me to, to work, not only because I had to drop out of college because of financial limitations, but also because I was already a young mom at 18 years old. I became a young mom. So I was also forced to study, uh, to, yeah, to learn about the stock market and increase my cash flow at the time. And I also did multiple jobs. Uh, to cut a long story short, my my 18-year-old journey was the turning point of my life. Everything that happened when I was 18, me having a child that um, pre-need company going bankrupt, all of this led me to where I am now. So if, if I did not go through that at the age of 18, it, it will not not be forced to level up in terms of maturity, in terms of handling my finances, because it would have been a lot different if I was still single and if I did not think of a child at 18 years old. So there. Wow. So it's really uh, starting very young with your dad, how strict he, he was, sabing ni John Paul. <laughs> Uh, but also responding to the circumstances uh, that you, it's like you were forced, but somehow you took the responsibility to be able to, to respond appropriately as well. You know, there, there could be other people who faced similar situation, but responded differently. But what you did was something that led you to something brighter, something more positive, and, and actually defined who you are right now, made you stronger in a better way. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, now we, we go into the topic of cash flow 101. And by the way, to the participants, feel free to ask questions as well. No? So uh, Miss Kat, how important is cash flow 101 amidst COVID? Cash flow, just, just before we start, maybe I would want to explain the meaning of having cash and having a good cash flow to all our viewers. Right. Having cash simply means you have money. You have money to pay your rent. You have money to pay your bills for food, for everyday living. You have money for your kids. But when you say cash flow, this is basically the this is basically the amount of money that goes in and out of your pocket every month. So when we say cash flow, this this would include how much do you pay in your debts on your credit. How, how much do you pay on your subscriptions for Spotify, for Netflix, those extra subscriptions you have? Because a lot of people would have enough cash. But when you study their cash flow, their cash flow would be very limited because once everything is paid for, for example, after they pay their bills, after they do their groceries, and after they set aside their allowance for the week or for the month, they would notice that comes limited and now covid was a test of our cash flow because cash flow would always include setting aside something for emergencies and before um some seminars i've attended they would tell you you have to have at least months of salary or three months of income to secure your cash flow in times of emergencies but now that has become a challenge because we have been on this COVID has put people on different levels of lockdown for more than three months already. So imagine if you only have three months of emergency money, you have to close your business. That yeah. would be a test of how much cash you have and how versus how good your cash flow is. Because even if your business does not operate anymore. There might be loans you have to pay. There might be employees or there might be rent that you still have to pay. So this COVID, it's, it's, it's the best time for us to assess our cash flow more than the cash that we have in our bank accounts. Wow. So it, it's really important to have that uh, knowing it has to be uh, in the right uh, state. It has to be positive right. somehow, no? Um, so some people might be might be doubtful because, uh, siguro tinatanong nila, is this for me? Is this topic for me? Or the principles? Um, do the principles I am about to hear from Miss Cat even applicable to me? Um, maybe let's let's give them some uh, some inspiration. Uh, I, I know that you've been teaching some young people 
uh, low-income high school students uh, earn their first million. And I don't know if uh, there's somebody already or maybe can give some update on that. Any story uh, that would uh, somehow inspire our viewers in this context? So, so I have been, uh, because for, for the last couple of years, I was the director for the new generation for the Rotary Club of Downtown Session. And there was a time when I had to, we had a program with uh, with a school, with a public school here in Baguio. And maybe it was, um, it was destiny for our speaker not to arrive. We had a speaker who was supposed to speak for them in behalf of Rotary, but he had an, a medical emergency that day. So I had to pitch in for him. I had to all of a sudden come up with a seminar because the students were ready, the teachers were ready, and the principal was waiting. So I had to come up with something. And because it was financial literacy that I, the ready material that I had was financial literacy, I had to make uh, the slides um, high school friendly. We went to a school with, this is a public school, and kids here below to a low income uh, family, basically their, their, their family income is more on the poverty line or the minimum wage earners. So what I did is I taught uh, the concept of investing to these kids. And um, during that time, there were around 47 uh, high schools, high school students. So out of that 47, our first group, we were 17. So 17 kids wanted to be under the mentorship program. But after screening, because part of the mentorship program is reading books, reporting in the group chat, they also have certain like minor homeworks to do. So part of that, after the screening phase, from 17, we were down to nine. So out of these nine kids, our goal was during the time, our goal was for them to earn, to earn their first million before they're 25. So if you would compute their age, we started, some of them were aged 15, 16. That was the youngest. So 15, 16, and some were on the 18, 19 year old bracket already. So that's senior high in public school. So the, the range of, of the mentees were 15 to 19 years old. And at first they were like, um, what my mentees told me, it's hard for him to think that he would earn his first million when he has not even tried holding or seeing 10,000 pesos. Right. So that's a very tall order or that's, it would require a lot of big thinking for you to think that I can earn my first million before I'm 25 when in fact he hasn't seen 10,000 pesos in their household because his parents do not even earn 10,000 pesos a month. So what we did first was a lot of training about first is where do they get money to invest? These are kids who only have allowances. Some do not even have allowances. They earn only from like uh, five senior high students only made money because they would help in construction, extra construction work. Like they would carry, for example, they would mine work, magbubuhat ng cemento. They would help with whatever they can do with construction site projects. They would be given two hundred or one fifty a day. They would, they would, um, they would save that money every week, and then they would update me in our group chat. They would tell me, "Ma'am, itong week ko na to meron ako na tabing four fifty." or meron ako naitabing 600, depende how much money yung naitabi nila. And for the month, most of them, for that whole month, meron sila natabing 2,000 pesos. For the others, ang ginagawa po nila, it, because we are now on social media, I have three ladies, ang ginawa niya, they, again, these are senior high students from mm -hmm. low-income families. What they did, they borrowed money from me for ukay, like um, wag wag na clothes, I lend them 1,000 pesos. They, um, talagang nag sila from Hilltop sa market. They got jackets. They got um, shirts, dresses for 50, 60, 70 pesos. Yung 1,000 na binigay ko sa kanila, they used that to sell these clothes online. And for example, they would, they would buy a jacket for 70 pesos or 80 pesos. 
and then they would sell it online for 350. Mm. And it was a very big profit because the 1,000 I gave them made them earn almost 7,000 pesos a group already. So and then when we, when they already had that extra money, imagine you buy a, a jacket for 70 pesos and then you sell that for 350 pesos online. That's already times five. Hmm. So the 1,000 I gave them to begin with, and then they picture a cell phone, cell phone camera lang, and then they posted it on Facebook. And then yung kinita nila from that, yun yung pinang start namin to invest because they cannot money from their parents because their parents do not have extra money. Ang mga parents po ng mga to, baon sa utang. So, it's very hard for them, it's very hard for them to ask extra money na pang, pang na mabigyan mo ka ng pang invest. It, it doesn't work that way. And so, what we did, when they already had the money, because we only needed 2,000 pesos to start. So, when they were able to make money, uh, it took them less than two months. Per, per per student to to make 2,000 pesos. If you would do the math, if you were a regular earning person, it, you just have to save 70 pesos every day and you have 2,000 a month. That's just about it. So these kids, they had the resolve to really earn their first million before they're 25. So what we did, as soon as they, as soon as they were able to have the money for investment, that's when we started. But it did not stop there. As young as they are, I already taught them, you cannot be single income children. Hindi pwede investment lang ang pagkukunan nyo ng pera. Dapat yung ginagawa nyo to make money, like selling online, iba po like na barter. Bartering has been very, um, bartering has been very common. So some of them resorted to bartering as well. For, 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 instead of, for example, um, buying groceries at home. Nakakatipid sila because yung mga old na gamit nila, binabarter nila for one tray of eggs, for canned goods, for milk. So they also save. So they have more money to save now. And with that amount, 2,000 pesos, we we're able to start our investments. Now, from these nine kids, we are now, we are now down to seven. Two had mm. dropped out because I'm very strict with the mentorship. Mm. It, I have a one-strike policy. You miss one meet you miss one meeting for no valid reason or you miss one homework or you miss um uh because they have a worksheet you miss submission of worksheet for a month you're out so that's one strike policy so i, I also ask them to to watch youtube videos and we discuss about it so there so now from 9 we we're, we're lesser so there so an update Again, we started with 2,000 pesos per child. Now, two of them have already a six-digit portfolio in investment. Wow. Six digits, yeah. That's something already, you know? Yes. And, and thank you for sharing that because some people might say, well, I, I'm not like uh, Miss Kat who had a father who was so... Oh, in depth with the stock market, no? And now you're sharing this nine, now seven students growing their investment from, from just a few thousands to now six digits could somehow give hope to, to our viewers and, and even to us here on Zoom, no? And that's powerful. That's beautiful. So having uh, shared that story, maybe let's get into the, the steps now or strategies that our viewers can can do can apply for them to uh, increase their cash flow and isabay na natin uh, managing uh, your finances. Uh, it's it's up to you to break that down or uh, which one would you like to discuss first? Okay, maybe for uh, managing their finances first before we go to increasing the cash flow. All right. So for for managing your finances. First is has there has to be elimination first. If you are someone who's not earning above twenty thousand a month, if your income is below twenty thousand a month, you have to know where your finances are bleeding. So you have to check. For example, are you renting a space that's too expensive? 
so you could check your your even your need even your so-called needs like shelter for example if you're renting for example an 8000 or 9000 unit that's already almost half of your salary if you're earning 20000 because you're going back this is the average income 15 to 20000 konti nga lang po yung mga ibang umaabot ng 20000 so first check where your uh, cash flow is bleeding is your high are you spending too much on load you can use your Spotify, other unnecessary subscriptions that you can do away without short term lang naman. It's not going to be forever. Just to increase your cash flow muna. So management of finances, you check where your where your finances are having major leaks. This is Spotify or Netflix subscriptions, or you could also have um, monthly recurring fees, for example, on your cell phone. Are you on a plan 1, 5, 2,000? Maybe you could make that plan 500 or 800. These are monthly things that you can lessen. So first, there has to be an elimination of unnecessary expenses. Mm -hmm. Because if you eliminate that in the future, you would have enough cash flow to afford more. So it first becomes with discipline. Like check where your cash flow is bleeding. Right. So there. Second is... You have to check your debts. We all have debts. It could be a credit card debt. It could be may utang ka sa kaigan, may utang ka sa kamag-anak. Huwag po kayong bibili ng bagong sapatos, bagong damit, or ano kung meron pa kayong utang. Even if you're ready for years, kahit unti-untihin nyo, bayaran nyo yung tao 500 a month, 1,000 a month, basta mabawasan because it would respect good faith. Sabi nga nila, baka kayo hindi ka umaasin. So kasi nagkakautangan, nagdadasal na, prosper kasi hindi niya ako binabayaran. You know, there, there, there's like I heard someone say, um, tell that, that bit of a for think of the people that you owe money from. Maybe kahit na matagal na, kahit na feeling mo nakalimutan na nila, make an effort to pay them first before even mm -hmm. investing. So again, the yeah. first one is eliminate unnecessary expenses and then check your debts and then the third one and go on. And for the third one, want to manage your finances is you have to be able to cushion your finances two ways. How do you cushion it? First, through emergency funds and insurances. Like I told you, now we have seen that three months of emergency funds are not enough because a lot of people have been unemployed for more than three months already. So maybe this could be a lesson for us. Have at least six months to one year of emergency funds. Even before you invest, even before you do that, you have your emergency fund because it's useless to think of investment pag wala na kayong kakainin. It's useless to think of increasing your cash flow kung wala kang pambayad ng rent. So you have to, you have to uh, protect income as well. So always remember that six months to one year of emergency fund should be the bare minimum already. And... You have to have safety nets in place in the form of insurances so that, for example, when you get sick, hindi mo magalo yung savings mo. There's HMO like MaxiCare, IntelliCare. There's health insurance for insurance companies, Sun Life, AXA, Phil, um, Pro Life. Get those because kahit gano pa kadami yung ipon mo, pag may nagtasakit, lahat yan mauubos. Lalo na if it's a critical illness. So those are staples. Those are imperatives in your financial management. Wow. So you have to cushion your finances. So again, ulitin lang natin just in case you weren't able to, to get it. First is eliminate the necessary expenses. Two, check your debts. And three, cushion. Kailangan may... Um, uh, ano bang Tagalog ng cushion? <laughs> Parang ano sir? Ano ba? Tagalog. Oh. So dapat may ano sorry, eh, dapat may 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 safety net yung finances mo. Tipo hand to mouth. You cannot live on a hand to mouth um level of of income. Right. Right. Yes. So thank you for sharing those three important uh, steps or strategies to to manage your finances. No pag-usapan naman natin ang increasing your cash flow. And After we manage your finances, 
pag meron ka ng emergency fund, wala ka ng utang, na bayaran mo ng mga taong pinagkakautangan mo, meron ka ng insurances, may savings ka na din, and you want to go back now. Yung mga tinanggal mo, subscriptions mo ng Netflix, ang spy, you want to go back to the trial. So, the time that you can increase your cash flow with investments. First is, um, the very simple, the simplest thing you can do to increase your cash flow is start with what you have. Think of the things you can sell online, you can barter online, look at your old stuff na usable pa appliances na um, inaalikabok lang, like for example, curtains you're not using, those bags that are piling up, whatever old stuff you have, you can sell those at a reasonable price or you can barter them. Because when you barter them for eggs, for rice, for canned goods, um, that means lessening your expense on groceries as well. So that's added cash flow for you. Instead na bumili ka ng bigas ng egg binarter mo yung gamit mo, so nakasave ka. So you can start with what you have first. So there. So, and aside from that, although now um, tourism is down, you can also, if it bounces back in a couple of years, maybe you can look at um, doing Airbnbs, I have known a lot of people, wala silang bahay, sila nag-rent, pero ang ginagawa nila, they're renting out properties, like I have a friend, um, she rented a four-bedroom house in Pakdal, and laging puno yun pag, pag nagbenga, pag Christmas, laging puno because tourists would want a house na merong fireplace. So, pinapatransient niya, extra income in for, for him or for her. So, uh, if you have that idea, also if you have uh, friends or you know people na caretakers na pwedeng you could um, make income from their properties, that could be an option. So start with what you have, your network. You, your network mo, saan ka pwedeng maka, or if you have extra service to offer your network, tutoring their kids, for example, or for example, may friend kang, halimbawa, may friend kang gumagawa ng donuts, pwede mo i-resell, ibenta mo at a higher price, Start with what you have. Start with your network, start with your, uh, with your guide sa bahay. Those are simple things. Start with even yung tinitirahan mong bahay. Kung three-bedroom yan, bakanti yung two bedrooms, pwede may parent in the future. Look at what you have. Be creative. Because when you look at, because it's long, when you look at things from different perspective, you're going to realize there's a lot of money around you. You know, just three days ago, meron akong nakausap na, hindi niya lang pinapansin yung mga halaman niya. So, pero ngayon, biglang naging uso yung plants. Ang ginawa niya, prinopagate niya, hindi niya alam, isang pat pala ng tumutubong parang gabi lang sa bahay nila would sell 100 pesos per pot. So, bigla siya nagka-income. Hindi niya napapansin, sabi nga niya, dati iniihian ko lang itong mga halaman na ito, yung pala pera to. Be creative. Think outside the box. I'm sure there is money sitting around you already that you don't know. So start with that. Second, so aside from that, aside from start with what you have, the networks you have, the things you have, um, even you can you can profit from the friends from from the from the business of your friends. Like what they say, kung my friends kang nagbe-bake, you can sell what they have at a higher price. For example, so start with that. So whatever it is, start with your start with your network, start with your talent. Marami po, like for example, you go to upwork.com if you're if you have a nice voice, maraming voice over talent doon na hinahanap nila. They would pay you for five minutes of voice over na gagawin mo. They would pay you for tutorial services, they would pay you for transcription services, they would even pay you to design their logo. So start with what you have, even if that's your talent, that your friends. Your, your things, there is always money sitting around. Just be creative and just think outside the box. I'm sure, you will find money around you. So that's first. Second, think of how to become an entrepreneur, even with a small capital. If you're familiar with Chris Roque, he is the founder of Camiseta. She's the owner of Camiseta. So for the ladies, I, I'm pretty sure you would know the brand Camiseta. She started Camiseta with 6,500 pesos capital only. Six five. Mm. And now look at Camiseta. It's in all 
the biggest malls in the Philippines, it has become a multi-million enterprise. And it just started with 6,500 pesos. So you just have to start. And dami na natin alam na success stories. But let's not just wag tayo mamangha sa kanila. Let's find their own niche. And from that, look for places, find a market that could benefit from that and that you could make money off. From a lot of people are asking me, ma'am, paano ba malalaman saan ka pwedeng kumita? Una, isipin mo, isipin mo saan ka ba magaling? What are you good at? Magaling ka ba magtahe? Magaling ka ba magluto? Magaling ka ba magsalita? Think of your talents first. And from, the, from that, what are you good at? Second, what are you good at that people need? Baka magaling ka sa math. Everything is done online now. You could be an online tutor. Or baka magaling kang magsulat. Ang dami naghahanap ng writers for their books, ghost writers. I have been a writer for more than 10 years. And I, and I until now, I'm still a ghost writer for an editor. I've been writing for him for almost two decades already. So think of what you're good at that people need. From there, think as an entrepreneur, how do you make money from that? Like what I said, a simple example is Camiseta. We have a lot of very big success stories. Um, I know someone, an, an, online, um, an online entrepreneur, an online seller. She owns the brand called Brilliant Skin, Brilliant Skin Essentials. She started with less than 50,000 capital, a very small capital. That was just three, four years ago, around four years ago. Now... Her business has been her business has been partnering with Everbilena with other big brands and now she is already worth nine digits. Imagine nine digits is more than a hundred wow. million pesos. Yeah. So you she can be inspired. So so okay, someone knows her from our group chat, Miss Glenda. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, she just turned twenty three this year. So many yes, Ara. she just turned twenty three this year. And she is already her net worth is already nine to maybe ten digits already. And she just started with what? Pampaganda ng mukha. Meron lang siyang naisip niya. Hindi naman siya chemist. Hindi naman siya. Um, hindi naman siya. Wala siyang medical background. But she had an idea. She had an idea, and she just asked the help of someone who knows how to, how to formulate formulate beauty products. And from that capital, imagine an, um, a very small capital, eight digits, 10,000, 15,000, less than 50,000 pesos. And it's now an enterprise that's more than 100 million. So just think outside the box. There is a lot of potential if you just look for things around you. And if you just really believe na kaya mong gawin, ang kailangan mo lang magsimula. Just start. That's all you have to do. Just start first there. And the third is you have to become an investor. Mm. You really have to invest. And for me, most of my, uh, my, my net worth has come from the stock market because the stock market has saved me from being really broke. Now, ang daming utang. I have seen my account na parang 1.5 na lang nandun, 1,000 na lang yung pera ko. I have gone through rock bottom. Ang dami ko nang, natry ko na umutang and all at a young age. And natry ko na rin ma-scam. So, be wary of scams. Pag, nag, pag may pat pinangako sa yung sobrang laki, medyo matakot ka na. So, the stock market will put you in a very different investment profile because here in the Philippines just to give you an idea ang stock market po kasi hindi yan tinuturo sa school so when you say the stock market it's basically an exchange where there is buying and selling of shares of company so para rin yung palengke the difference is sa palengke yung binibili mo nahawakan mo pag bumili ka ng bigas bumili ka ng gulay nahawakan mo in the stock market you invest on companies on paper. So there. Um, can we go to the next slide, po? Uh, Sir Chris. 
Yeah, and so these are example of the companies where you can invest in the stock market. So these are very big companies. So these are what we call blue chips. Who would have thought na yung mga batang mini mentor ko for only 2,000 pesos nakapag-invest sila sa Jollibee, nakapag-invest sila sa Ayala Land, nakapag-invest sila sa Pure Gold. And we're only talking about a few thousand pesos. What more kung working ka? What more if you're working class? You can invest in these companies. You know, just to give you an idea, during the lockdown, if you were investing, if you were an investor in the stock market um, last March, we had lockdown at March 15. Less than a week before the lockdown, ang stock market po natin bumagsak. So if we will go back to that list of companies, yung list po of companies where you would invest, for example, Pure Gold. Pure Gold went as low as 25, 27 pesos. Nasa ganung range lang. So if you invested, halimbawa, 2,000 pesos no March, well, let's make it 5,000 pesos. If you invested 5,000 pesos last March in Pure Gold, bumili ka ng Pure Gold. At halimbawa, 25 pesos. And now, ha after how many months? It's now August. Or let's let's end it with July, for example. March, April, May, June, July. That's only four months. Yung four months po na yun, ang kinita ng pera mo is already more than 50%. Because the price of pure gold in the stock market went up Umagot pa po yan ng around 48, 47 pesos. Medyo bumaba lang ngayon because our markets are bleeding now. So sobrang bagsak ng stock market ngayon because of COVID. Bagsak ang presyo ng SM because a lot of malls, walang food traffic, walang gusto pumunta sa malls. Bagsak ang presyo ng Jollibee kasi pati ang Jollibee, kalahati lang ang pwedeng dine-in. Ayaw, ayaw rin ng mga taong lumabas, puro deliveries. Bagsak ang Ayala Land kasi wala mo nang bumibili ng condominiums. But you know that these are very stable companies. SM, Ayala, Robinsons, Pure Gold. These are big companies. San Miguel. These are companies you can invest in kahit na ang pera mo 2,000 or 5,000 pesos lang. So now we are in a state of capitulation. When we say capitulation, um, sir, can we go to the next screen po? So this is how our stock market is because of COVID, bagsak na bagsak po ang stocks. So if you would look at that line, yan pong pinakamababa. That was our stock market last March until April. So that was December. That You will compare our stock market from last year. December and because of now of the lockdown, sobrang bagsak niya. And it's not just in the Philippines. You can see that's the stock market in the world. That's even, even in China the S&P 500 in the U.S. is also down. In the emerging markets, the emer when we say emerging markets, these are Brazil, India, um, Russia, China. These are your emerging economies. And you can see that this, uh, even in these countries, the stock market went down. So we're having a global capitulation, meaning we're having a global drop in market prices. And why am I telling you this? Because this is now the best time to invest. Mura lahat ngayon. Imagine um, Jollibee. Last year was around 250, 230 pesos. Now it's less than 150 per share. More than 100 pesos ang discount. Why not buy now? SM is on sale. San Miguel is on sale. Pure gold. Pure gold from 48, 47 pesos. It's now trading more than 25% lower. So this is the best time to invest in the stock market. Kasi po, pag invest ka sa stock market, wala ka iniisip na rent. Wala ka iniisip na empleyado. Wala ka iniisip na babayaran na kuryente, tubig sa nire-rent mong space. You just invest, leave your money there, check it after a few months, check it next year. Kung hindi ka naman marun mag trade, that's fine. Invest in good companies and then forget about it. It's gonna grow on its own. Because I tell you, once a vaccine is discovered, our stock market will rebound.
this will not last forever. Our stock market will our stock market will not bleed forever. Because it's global capitulation now, it's the best time to enter the markets. In po. Mm. Wow. Interesting, no? And another reason aside from aside from the fact that we are under a global capitulation, second is fundamentally we have a very good demographics. Ang Pilipinas po we are one of the youngest population in the world. If you'll notice, uh, last year, in 2020, um, in America, there was a, a big drop in the number of babies being born. Ayaw na po ng mga millennial ang maraming anak. Ano sabihin nito? There is a global population bomb that's being diffused. Meaning, a lot of people now, a lot of countries now are getting old. China is getting old. Japan is getting old. Puro na po sila matatanda. Korea is getting old. In, even in the U.S., like uh, what you see on your screen, even in America, they have seen the fewest number of children born since 1986. What does this mean? Tumatanda sila, their average age is above 40. Tayo, 23 years old pong average age ng Filipinos. Anong, anong relationship niyan sa investment mo? What does it mean to your money? We are entering what we call a demographic sweet spot. When we say demographic sweet spot, it's a time in the economy when a lot more than half of our population is at a young age, below 40 years old. Ibig sabihin, pinakakonti ang senior citizen, pinakakonti ang estudyante na walang income, at ang senior citizen na retired. Bulk of the Filipinos are working age. What does that, what does that mean? They will be paying taxes. Kung OFW yan, magpapadala ng pera sa Pilipinas. Kung negosyante yan, magbibigay yan ng trabaho. In all economies, ang China po. China became the number two economy in the world because of their demographic sweet spot. In the 1980s until the 1990s, China, imagine, China is 1 billion population. Imagine me 1 billion na puro factory workers, migrant workers na papadala ng pera sa China, IT experts. So, ang, kaya nga sabi nila, China is the factory of the world. Everything is made in China. Because for a lot of decades, ang dami nilang employees na nagtatrabaho to stimulate their economy. Because China has a one-child policy. Isa lang pwedeng maging anak nila before. But now, yung mga, yung mga bunga ng one-child policy dati, tumatanda na sila ngayon. They are becoming senior citizens. So, medyo nagsasuffer ng economy. Bakit nagsasuffer ng economy pag puro matatanda? Kasi, ang dami mong binabayaran ng pension, eh wala na silang contribution sa economy mo. Like yung mga retirees natin, mga nagpe-pension from GSIS, from SSS, they don't pay taxes anymore, but the government needs to give them money for the rest of their lives. So can you imagine if more than half of your population will become retirees, our economy will be going down. Kasi uh, konti yung nagtatrabaho, pero ang daming binubuhay ng gobyerno. In the case of the Philippines, it's the opposite. Kokonti ang retirees natin, maraming young population. Average age of Filipinos is 23. Average age of Japan is 46. Mm. It's very old. They're double our age. Kaya nga po sila nag ng mga overseas workers natin. Because of that. Because they need people to work. They need people to work and stimulate their economy. Kailangan nila na mag magtatrabaho sa restaurant, magtatrabaho sa hotel, magtatrabaho sa hospital. Because you need workers to stimulate the economy. And if you have too much old people, if you have too many old people, your economy might suffer. Kasi ang daming nagbabayad, ang daming mong binabayaran ng, like sa Pilipinas po, libre ang PhilHealth ng mga senior citizen. Pero nagbabayad ba sila ng PhilHealth contributions? Hindi. But our government needs to pay for that. So they are not, ang good thing about the Philippines, ito yung time na pinakakonti ang senior citizen at pinakakonti ang students na walang income. Bulk of our population is working class. So if you are not going to invest now, you are saying 
actually taught. Your demographic window will only last for 20 years, 20 more years. According to PSA, PSA is the old NSO. Yung record po ng PSA, our population will only be this young for the next 20 years. So kung mag invest ka now, for the next 10 to 20 years, your investments are expected to grow. Kahit na sino pa umupong presidente dyan, our economy will be going up because we are a consumer economy. When a vaccine gets discovered, our markets will be going up. People will spend money again. People will go to the malls again. People will travel again. So habang ngayon, everybody is in a state of fear, that's when you invest. The markets are bleeding. You invest when there is blood on the streets. So this is the best time. 2,000 pesos is not a lot of money. This is what we all need to keep track of during COVID. Now that it's COVID, these are the four things that are very important that you, you, you have to know and you have to note. You have to know what you own. When you say what you own, it's not just your money. What talents do you have? What networks do you have? And what resources do you have? God has blessed all of us with a lot of resources. It's just a matter of utilizing them and multiplying them. And if you maximize your resources, I'm pretty sure you will have everything covered. You'll be able to increase your cash flow. Second, you have to know what you owe. Hindi pwedeng utang kalimutan. Kailangan po nating bayaran yan. Kahit na kamag-anak mo yan, best friend mo yan, kahit na kapatid mo yan, magulang mo yan, if you owe them money, pay it back. Kahit po gipit ka, ano ba yung bayaran mo lang kahit 1,000 a month? Para lang naman malaman nilang hindi mo nakalimutan. Because again, giving back what you owe would show that you still have good faith. Even because they have they have given you money when you needed no kailangan kailangan mo when you needed it the most they were there they trusted you with kahit na one thousand pesos lang yan nagtiwala sila at pinahiraman ka kailangan mo pong bayaran lalo na if it's if it's credit card debt mas lalo kailangan mong bayaran yan because the interests are piling up so always remember what you owe third what you're earning. Always live below your means. Always live below your means. Lagi mong isipin na baka bukas mawalan ka ng trabaho. Magkano ba napupunta sa savings mo, sa emergency fund mo, magkano ba napupunta sa expenses mo. In 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 principle, ang utang, ang utang mo po dapat is only 30% of what you earn. So kung kumikita ka ng, halimbawa, kumikita ka ng 30,000 a month, Dapat yung binabayaran mo utang buwan-buwan, whether car loan yan, housing loan yan, dapat it's not more than 9,000 pesos. So it, your loan should not be more than 30% of what you earn per month there. And fourth, where it's going. That is a measure of your cash flow. Saan ba napupunta yung perang pinaghihirapan mo? Saan ba na, pag nagkaroon ka ng extra cash flow, bibili ka ba ng bagong cellphone? Pag nagkaroon ka ng extra cash flow... Lilipat ka ba sa mas mahal na tirahan? Mag-upgrade ka ba ng sakyan? So, check, do check and balance. Kung mag-upgrade ka halimbawa ng laptop, pero magagamit mo naman yan sa trabaho mo, magagamit mo naman yan to generate more money, then by all means, do so. So, check where your money is going. Make sure that when you shell out a peso na hindi part ng needs mo, ang babalik sa'yo would be more. So, these are the four things that you have to track for you to be able to increase your cash flow and manage your finances. You know? Wow. Thank you, Ms. Kat. So again, keep track of what you own, what you owe, bayaran ng utang, then what you earn and where it is going. So Yes. Well, and sing it ko lang po pala. Where it's going, maybe um, you would also want to consider if you're not doing it yet, magtabi ka naman ng para kay Lord. You do your tithing or you 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 be a blessing to others as well. So kasi you cannot sabi nga nila, 'di ba? You cannot give what you don't have. So ang hirap maging blessing sa iba kung ikaw mismo um baon ka sa utang, kung ikaw mismo um hindi ka makabayad ng bill. So the the key there is have to increase your cash flow. Pero ang challenge nga diyan eh ano ba yung kaya mong i-share? Sabi nga nila, the measure of generosity and faithfulness is 
how much can you give the Lord when you have almost nothing? How much can you give others who are more in need? Yung mga mas nagubutom sa'yo, magkano yung kaya mo itulong pag ikaw mismo halos wala ka na? So that could also be a measure. That, that could be the hard questions you can ask yourselves as well. At any income. At any income. Iba kasi sinasabi, saka na ako tutulong pag mayaman ako. Saka na ako magta-tithing pag mataas na income ko. So, you have to also ask yourself those hard questions because that's gonna be a measure of your character. Sabi nga nila, pag hindi mo maitipi yung 1,000 dun sa 10,000 na sudo mo, kahit na magkaroon ka ng 100,000, hindi ka, hindi ka pa rin makakapagtabi ng 10,000 dyan. So, if you cannot save a small amount from a small income, I'm sure you cannot save a small amount from a very big income also. So there. Wow. So it's really a measure of your character as well. Uh, pag hindi mo masimulan sa maliit, hindi mo magagawa sa malaki. So thank you for, for inserting that, Miss Kat. Now, may mga comment, uh, limbawa sa Facebook, sabi niya, so many realizations. Thank you for this session, sabi ni Sheikh Kanikosa. Um, we also have here... We have a question from Miss uh, Ara. Um, I'm walking around BGC reflecting while listening. Do you have mentorship program, Miss Kat, or one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, po. I do po one-on-one. -on -one. The mentorship program po right now, meron po kasi kaming minimit muna na amount. Like, for, for my seven high school students, once we meet a certain amount, I can accept new mentees already. Kasi marami pong nagtatanong for for a next batch of mentees. So, pag may pag um ngayon po kasi wala pang kalahati. Hindi pa umaabot sa more than half. Wala pang four students yung naka naka experience nung six figures na income. So, pag natawid namin yun, if four out of seven, pag natawid na namin yung six digit na income, closer to their first million before their 25, we can accept new mentees um already. But for, for those who want to do one-on-one -on -one session, like for example, hindi naman siya long-term, like for example, you just want to have a one-on-one -on -one session a once every two weeks or maybe a few hours per month, we can do that naman po. We, can, we, just, have to, we just have to arrange the schedule because ngayon ang maganda because it's locked down. I don't have travel. I don't have a lot of travels because normally po when, when I'm working, I'm overseas every week and I need to be in New York every 45 days. So ngayon, kasi lockdown, bawal mag-travel, I have time ngayon na maglalo na online naman lahat. I have time to do um, mga konting coaching sessions also. Wow, yeah. that's good. That's so good. And that's so generous of you. Now we have a question. I'd like to combine the question on Facebook and on sa, sa Zoom kasi parang uh, connected. Uh, Shay... Kanikosa is asking how to start investing in stocks. Is BDO no more a good platform? And John Paul is asking, ano po gamit yung pang-invest sa stock market? Uh, call financial at paano nyo po calculate ang mga fees? So maybe you can start with uh, how to start investing. Okay. If you want to invest in the stock market, we have a lot of platforms. We have BDO no Mura. So we also have Call Financial. Call Financial, that's C-O-L. C-O-L Financial. You can just Google it. You have an online sign-up link. Call Financial is one of the platforms endorsed by Mr. Bo Sanchez. You can open an account with them for as low as 1000 for mutual fund and 5000 for a stock market account for uh, Call Financial. These are your brokers. Pag sinabi pong brokers, online brokers, these are your way to buy companies in the stock market. Kasi hindi ka naman pwedeng bumili na mag-online ka and after that, bibili ka na lang sa stock market on your own. You always need a broker. So when you sign up with them, halimbawa po nag-sign up ka sa Call Financial ng 5,000 pesos. Yung 5,000 na yun, hindi po yung sign up fee. Yung 5,000, that is already your buying power. Pwede mo nang gamitin yun to buy konting pure gold, konting Ayala land. So, pwede ka na po mag-start. Um, and to answer the question of uh, one of um, the, the one who asked what platform I'm using, I have put 12, I use 12 platforms. Wow. For, yeah. Um, para pag-down yung isa, 
uh, I can I can use others. I also, mm-hmm. ang ginagawa ko po kasi, I opened a different account for a different year. So yung account ko noong 2008, yung account ko noong 2004, yung account ko po noong 2004, uh, ano po yun, it's not an online, entirely online account, it's with a traditional broker. Talagang tao yung kausap ko doon. So, medyo bata pa yung online platform nila. Yung account ko po noong 2008, noong 2012, 2009, yung account ko noong 2013, 2015, 2016, and so on, I use different accounts. So, I have a total of 18 accounts using 12 platforms. So far, the best platform that I have tried is First Metro Pro and Triple A. Triple A equities. They are so far for me personally. I, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. I, I. I'm not an employee of any of those brokers. But as an investor and as a trader, those are the fastest and best platforms I have seen. Triple A equities and First Metro Pro. The problem is that First Metro Pro, the opening of account is two hundred thousand with them. With um. Triple A equities to open an account, it's 50,000. So medyo mas mataas pa yung capital. Unlike yung mga iba, pag beginner, pwede na siguro po sa call financial. Sa First Metro po, meron silang yung hindi pro, yung First Metro Sec, yung regular lang. First Metro Sec would let you open an account for only uh, 5,000 pesos. Yan. So First Metro Sec, um, call financial, Uh, BDO Nomura, these are your cheaper platforms. I mean, the lower cost platforms, kung beginner ka pa lang po. So, if you're already advanced, um, yun, pwede na. Pwede na pong ano. Pwede nang mag, um, pwede nang mag, mag-switch to other platforms na medyo mas advanced also. Wow. Thank you for giving us those options. No? Uh, We have another question. Uh, parang follow-up question. Ano po advantage sa Metro Pro and AAA, ma'am, compared sa lower-cost platforms? From John Paul. Okay. First, the advantage is the platform itself because it lets you automate. When you say automate, halimbawa, hindi mo naman naintindihan ang stock market pa. Bago ka pa lang, nag-aaral ka pa lang, um, hindi mo pa alam magbasa ng graph, hindi mo pa alam mag 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 technical analysis these platforms they have tools for beginners like you like for example bumili ka ng Jollibee ngayon at halimbawa bumili ka ng Jollibee at worth 150 pesos just an example 150 pesos in your mind ay ibebenta ko na to pag kumita na ako ng 25% for example pwede mo siyang gawing automatic with first metro uh, with triple a for example kahit hindi ka naka-log in, pag nilagay mo doon na sell at, for example, 25% profit, kahit hindi ka naka-log in, kahit na busy ka sa trabaho mo, mag-automatic siya. Isi-sell niya yung, yung Jollibee mo para may kita kang 25%, something like that. So, may, medyo mas may automation. And First Metro kasi, they have what we call the Recognia platform. It's a platform that makes it automatic for you to do technical analysis. Kunyari, sabihin mo, maganda ba bumili ng San Miguel ngayon? Pwede mong gamitin yung may tools sila na available. Sasabihin niya, kung ang income timeline mo, ay kung ang timeline horizon mo is 3 to 6 months, ang presyo niya ba more on pataas or more on pababa based on technical analysis? Sasabihin niya na sa'yo kung good time to buy or sell. Ganon. May ganon pong options ang First Metro Pro and for and triple a equities also so they have plat they have extra tools that will help you with your investment journey and with your trading journey kung gusto mo maging trader wow so ganun pala no kasi ako yes. I, i just use one platform uh from okay. kasi pag isang platform or... din po na uh, like <laughs> isang experience ng isa pag down yung isa kunyari ay pagsak presyo ng pure gold ngayon pero down yung platform hindi ka makabili hindi ka mm-hmm. maka ano hindi ka makabili kasi down yung ginagamit ng platform and may mga certain plat ako rin po based on experience um yung mga mas mahal na platform mas mabilis din siguro kasi mas konti pa yung gumagamit 
kaya po nila yung quick trades also. Talagang very real time. I see. That's why. Mas, That's why. Opo, trader friendly po siya talaga. Right. It can execute fast trades and automate trades as well. Wow, that's so good. So at least uh, for a uh, long-term horizon, I mean, if they go advanced, they have these options. Uh, now we have a a wonderful question from John Paul. Ano po advice nyo kung pwede po kayo bumalik uh, ten, sa 10-year-old ten self nyo and why? So what's your advice to your younger self? To my younger self, perhaps kung babalik ako 10 years old grade, that's around grade Five or grade four? Grade five or grade four. Yeah. So, medyo nag, in, iniisip ko ilang taon na ba ako nun. So, maybe my advice would be, ironically, is to play more. I haven't been a very playful child. Um, I would advise younger self to play more because ngayong matanda ka na, yun yung mga kinacrave mo eh. Parang, um, I wish I had more fun because even during my elementary years, lagi lang akong nasa library, hindi ako masyak. I wasn't a fun kid to begin with. Uh, ang laro ko lang always with my cousins. Ang laro ko all, most of the time with my cousins and yung mga classmates kong lalaki. I would play sipak, mga ganyan, sa jumping rope. I wish I would have played more and because I, I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of library time it's not that I don't, it's not that I regret library time, but now that I'm older and I was I, a mom at a very young age, I think I missed out on a lot of play. Kasi, ano eh, um, people who know me, they know me as medyo, ano, seryoso, seryosong tao. I, I, I'm not very adventurous. I'm not, um, I don't have a very playful personality. Like, my, my job now, I study the stock market I interview economists around the world um I, I always talk about finance I talk about recessions from different people I talk about investments a lot there there is not a lot of fun element in in what I do so if I would give my 10 years self all that advice I would probably tell myself to play more because you're not going to have a lot of time. Eight years from now, you're going to be a mom. So if I knew, I would have really played more because now I I spend most of my time reading. I spend most of my time managing investments. I spend like a lot of time in airplanes. So I would advise my 10-year-old self to just play more and have fun and enjoy my youth because a lot of kids now, um, don't know how to play. They're just on their gadgets. They're just so idle and fixated on the screen. So I would also tell that to my kids. Um, play more. Get dirty. That's right. what I would tell myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And it's a good reminder for me as well, no? To to play more. So John Paul, play more. <laughs> of course, while yeah. well, dealing with all the, the seriousness of life. Sabi nyo nga, uh, oh, ma po, mukha kayo serious and precise, ma'am, sabi ni John Paul. <laughs> so, yes. Um, again, thank you everybody for, for joining us. I'll be asking Miss Kat to, to say her closing words in a while. Uh, but we'd just like to read a comment uh, on Facebook. Sabi ni Miss Che, kaliya, uh, hi uh, Chris, hi Kat, great insights, no? So, uh, again, you can check the link dun sa pinos niya for, for those who want to to check that at yung Call Financial. She's our friend from Call Financial. And also, you can check our previous interview with her, lalo na kay uh, Ms. She Kanikosa. So thank you also for joining us. And uh, to those of you who want to follow Ms. Kat on, on Facebook, uh, you can follow her uh, Facebook page because uh, Every now and then, she's sharing uh, great content yeah, at facebook.com forward slash road to financial literacy. Oh. Let's hear the closing words from Miss Katrina Victoria Gumaya. So first, I want to say thank you, Sir Chris, for having me. And thank you to, uh, to everyone who, who's watching. I just want to say that I think the core of 
the core of all this, um, why I, I always share things about uh, cash flow, about investing, about finances, is the message I just want to tell you is it has always been the same. It's, a, it's always been the message of stewardship. We have all been blessed with so much, far beyond what we asked for. We have been blessed with much more than we really deserve. No, even not in the form of money, kahit po hindi, hindi tayo financially, uh, financially wealthy, there are a lot of things to be thankful for. Yung hindi ka pa, nag, hindi ka nagkakasakit, lahat ng family mo, COVID-free pa rin. These are things that you have to be thankful for. And always, uh, ako, um, I, the reason why I do sessions like this is to remind everyone to, to just be stewards of what God has given you. Kung nabigyan ka ng trabaho, kahit gano'ng kaliit yung sweldo, multiply what God has given you. Kasi when your time is up in this world, hindi mo naman madadala yan eh. You're not gonna bring all your investments with you. With you. You're not gonna bring all those fancy things you have with you. It's just gonna be you and your God at the end of the day. So, sa lahat ng inaaral natin about investments, about cash flow, about the stock market, about finances, Always remember to put God at the center. When you invest, honor God. You always have to. You always have to remind yourself. Na yung pera ini invest mo, hiram lang yan. Hindi yan sao. Kahit na pinaghirapan mo yan, sinabi mo na pinagpawisan, pinagpaguran mo yan. That's not really yours. Kay Lord lahat yan. Iba balik mo rin yan someday. Iba balik mo bayan ng kulang, na ang dami mo utang, negative ka pa. O iba balik mo yan na multiply mo na ishare mo pa sa iba. So I think um, that's all I have to say. Always for God, He has been so gracious in my life. He has allowed me to meet the right people. He has allowed me to travel the world. He has allowed me to attend a very good school. And I think I, I'm, I'm more than thankful. I'm not yet in the financial goal that I want. I have a target amount when I'm 40 years old. I have a target retirement fund when I'm 40. But I'm still thankful for whatever, for whatever I have now. And I just wish, ko ano man yung konting meron ako, sana ma-share ko sa iba. And um, lahat naman po ng tao, like more than half of, the, of working Filipinos now are having financial difficulties. Ngayon na wala tayong pera, wala ka may tulong na pera, in what way can you still help others? In what way can you still be a steward? In what way can you still be a blessing? outside finances because at the end of the day we're talking about finances but the core of what we do is beyond money it will always be beyond money so thank you again for having me and have a good evening our heavenly father thank you so much for this wonderful growth conversation once again with, with miss kat thank you for allowing us to, to learn how to manage our finances how to increase our cash flow and may the insights and stories shared by Ms. Kat inspire us and move us and, and guide us guide us Lord as we implement these learnings we ask you to bless also Ms. Kat her families and all her endeavors to be safe and also all our participants bless your dreams bless your goals we lift up to you all our prayers in Jesus mighty name Amen